Stats.sa has fired back to say that these key data are available in other publications and that it's not keeping back any data from the public. Well, to unpack the implications of all this, I'm joined by Dr. Sean Muller. He's a senior research fellow at the Johannesburg Institute for Advanced Studies. Thanks very much, Dr. Muller, for joining us. So in practical terms, what are the implications of the exclusion of this key data that I've mentioned from the Census 2022 report? Uh, good afternoon and thanks for having me. Um, well, I think the, the issue is not so much the exclusion of this data, but what it tells us about the reliability of the census itself. And the key issue there, if we wanted to focus in on one particular thing, is that the census had an undercount of around 30% nationally, and that's um, the estimate of Statistics South Africa itself. And that undercount of households was around 35% in the Western Cape and Gauteng, which are two of our most um, populous provinces. Now, typically for a census, um, ideally for a census, you'd like to count everybody, but that pretty much never happens in any country, um, perhaps except very small ones. Um, but typically you'd hope for an undercount of around maybe 10%. Now, with an undercount of 30% nationally and 35% in some big provinces, that really raises concerns about whether the census can actually serve the purpose that it's supposed to serve, which is to give us a comprehensive sense um, of the state of the country, um, particularly in demographic terms. So the, the unwillingness to release this data um, in, in, in a particular form just adds to concerns that already existed about the credibility of the census overall. So what about what the statistician general told us yesterday when he spoke to SABC News that that data is readily available in other publications? It doesn't necessarily have to be in the census because this data is published on an annual basis. He talked about, for example, the mortality rates and the household income uh, numbers coming out sometime this year, even though yeah. they're not included in the census 2022. Mm. Um, well, I missed that interview, unfortunately, so uh, I can't speak to that specifically. But what I would say is that um, if, as a researcher, uh, one wants to check the reliability of the data, you typically need something more than maybe the high level information that he's talking about. So you want to see something a bit more granular in order to be able to see, because um, basically what happens is when you have a 30% undercount, you, you, have to, um, uh, you have to sort of guess who the, that 30% is in order to come up to the right numbers, okay? And there are various methods that statisticians and economists and others use for this. But basically, it comes down to sophisticated guesswork. And the bigger the undercount, the more likely that that guesswork is not going to be reliable. And uh, in order to double check that, you want to be able to look at these, this kind of information, but at a much finer level in order to see, like, is this really credible? And there has been a report that's been done by some demographers. They do raise some serious concerns. Um, they, look at, they look at other issues. Um, but the fundamental issue is that we had a 30% undercount, and there are specific reasons why that happened. Okay, one of those reasons is that Statsasay was underfunded. Another reason is that COVID-19 interfered with the program that Statsasay had, both to run its pilot for the census and actually run the census. As I understand it, they wanted to run the census in October 2021. They had to run it in February 2022, and actually it took four months, it was spread over four months, which is also not ideal, okay? So, um, and they used new enumeration methods, digital methods. So there were three big issues um, that contributed to that undercount. Um, and I take the perhaps slightly radical position that the right approach might just be to rerun the census. Hmm. That, that, is a, that is very radical indeed. But like you say, I suppose we had COVID-19. That was a blip, I suppose. Um, so from that perspective, we can't really ascribe fault to Stats SA. And also the other issue as well, do you think that, given that you say that they were underfunded, do you think that they have sufficient capacity even in normal times such as these? I think, um, I think there is some evidence to suggest that Stats SA has been underfunded at a more systematic level. Um, and some people will say, well, that's just reflecting the state of public finances at the moment. There's a degree of truth to that. But at the same time, I think it does reflect a lack of prioritization. I don't think that National Treasury's strictness 
with Stasis A was really justified, the way that it led to Stasis A um, essentially having to rush its processes in order to meet um, uh, fiscal year deadlines and concerns about rollover of funds and so forth. Um, so I think um, Stasis A uh, has shown in the past that it has the capacity to run something like a census in a credible way. Um, I, and I think you mentioned the issue of blame. I mean, uh, one could, some people want to attribute blame to Stasis A, one could attribute blame to the National Treasury and the presidency and so forth, but I don't think that's going to get us I think um, two, two, you know, it cost about two billion or 2.3 billion, depending um, which source you go to. Um, that seems like quite a lot of money. But on the other hand, um, I think that money can be found. If you think about the fact that the census at the moment is only being run every 10 years, that's sort of 230 million a year. That's not so much when you think about it from that point of view. Yeah. Um, uh, for example, and, and, and if you rerun the census, of course, it also creates, it has other benefits, right, which are not the core issues. But for example, it creates um, temporary employment opportunities and so forth. So um, uh, that money can be found. There's something known as the Employment Tax Incentive, which we're spending uh, over 7 billion rand a year on at the moment, um, and uh, is pretty ineffective. So um, I think some of that money could easily be diverted uh, to rerunning the census, and then we wouldn't have this issue where for the next 10 years, we're going to be debating whether the population numbers are right, whether the allocations made to municipalities and provinces are appropriate and so forth, whether the, the supposed government of national unity, the new coalition, has achieved progress or not and so forth. Yeah. So I think that the, the, the right solution is actually just to rerun the census, um, allocate the money, um, don't, don't spend the time on a blame game and have academics like myself unpicking this data for the next 10 years and debating whether it's accurate or not. Yeah. So, Dr. Muller, if your advice is not taken, does that now render the census 2022 useless? And what are the implications for you currently as researchers in terms of dealing with this particular data? Are you sort of uh, left redundant? Well, it's rare that any data is actually completely useless. I mean, so 70% of the country appears to have been enumerated. That is very valuable. Um, the problem is that we don't have a good sense of why people weren't remunerate, uh, uh, enumerated and the differences between them. So, for example, you know, the, the census um, uh, enumerates about 17 million households, I think. Your average household survey um, looks at about 30 to, to 50,000, right? Um, but the thing is that those um, households, the way that those surveys are designed is to make them nationally representative. The census, we don't do that because you're trying to count everybody. Okay, so um, uh, it's not it's not useless, but it's much it's it's not going to be able to serve. It's probably not going to be able to serve the purposes we would want a census to serve. OK, so that's the fundamental issue. Different researchers use this information for different purposes, but I think it's going to be a problem for a wide range of researchers across the board. And it's also going to be a big problem for government itself, because government makes many decisions on the basis of census information. OK, so, yeah, there can be a range of problems. Yes. No, that was going to be my next question. The implication for government as it form, you know, formulates policy uh, around the data that it's got from the various census. Do you think that that is going to make it very difficult for them to implement proper policies, you know, when it comes to things like building, you know, housing, etc., and just basically public service delivery? Absolutely. Um, you, you may have already heard um, some of the issues about, for example, the, the city of Johannesburg complaining that its population hasn't been correctly estimated. These population estimates feed into formulas that the National Treasury uses to decide the allocation of money across provinces and across municipalities, right? So the idea is, well, if Johannesburg has 15% of the national population, it should get approximately 15% of the money allocated to um, to local government. Okay, that's that's a it's a rough explanation because we also take into account the, the 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 composition of the population. You know, you want to know how many people there are of um, school going age, so that you make the appropriate allocation to education. You want to estimate um, other um, parts of the population to estimate the allocation to healthcare and so forth. But um, there, are, there are many crucial just public finance decisions that rest on these population numbers. Yeah. And then of course there are other um, policy decisions as well, tracking progress and so forth. Um, so yes, it's gonna be a big problem for government. It's actually a big problem that National Treasury itself should be concerned with. Um, and that's just another reason why they should be willing to make the, the funds available um, to get this done correctly. Yeah, one last thing, uh, Dr. Muller. Is this your first time to express this sentiment or is there a body of you as researchers and academics who have said that government should go down this route 
of launching another census? No, um, this, is, this is just an expression of my individual professional opinion. Um, as far as I know, there hasn't been any attempt to, um, to coordinate views on this. Um, I, you know, the, the, the two academics who published the report for the South African Medical Research Council, two demographers at UCT, um, I don't think, I skimmed through the report, I don't think that they've called for a rerun, but they have raised serious concerns about credibility um, and they've raised doubts about whether those can be addressed which is, you know, a substantiation of a position that, that it should be rerun. Um, yes, so, but, you know, I don't think that this is also just a, a decision that should be informed by the, the opinions of academics, whether individuals like myself um, or, or collectives. Um, I think it's a public uh, discussion that needs to happen. Um, it is going to be public money that's going to be spent again, um, but it's also data that's going to be in that's going to inform our understanding, just as members of the public, about the state of our society and the progress that has been made both since the last census and that will be made um, in between now and the next census. Right. So um, it should be a public discussion. There should be um, policymakers and, and, of course, uh, just members of the public who should who should have a point of view. But no, there is no coordinated position um, amongst researchers. But I doubt I, well, my sense is I doubt that many researchers would oppose the idea, except perhaps on grounds of um, practicality and um, and expenditure of public funds. Yeah. Well, maybe some government officials are listening to you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sean Muller. He's a senior research fellow at the Johannesburg Institute for Advanced Studies.